Hi, this is Dave. This is Tara. And this is Adam. And you're listening to People Also Watched. We're three industry insiders clinging onto the lower rungs of the Hollywood ladder, and we love examining movies. Every month, studios release big budget features, and for every one of those, there are a ton of lesser known movies you just might love. So, as we <laughs> cling here to the bottom of this career ladder, we're going to watch big budget movies, but we're also going to introduce you to an older, nearly forgotten movie that people also watched. So, like and subscribe to us wherever you listen to podcasts. And hey, do you like Twitter? How about Instagram? <laughs> How about TikTok? Well, forget TikTok. We're too old for that. But on Twitter and Insta, you can find us at People Also Watch. No E-D. Remember, just People Also Watch. Ah, uh, I remember E-D. Better remember? times. You mean like better last times. night? What? Oh, no. <laughs> wait, wait, I'm sorry. E-D is for better times, Dave? I feel I like... Wait, is that not what it means? Better dimes? No. No? 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 Is that wrong? Is it? Nope. Somehow oh. you're BD. married, Dave. Somehow yeah. Dave is. Somehow all three of us are married, and there is yeah. a lot yeah, of that's confusion right. in that. Pretty sad. Oh, and we're all in a closet right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> oh, that's so symbolic. Ah, uh, well, it's the movie that revived Keanu Reeves' career again. It made over $66 million at the box office, but started a franchise that has made over $1 billion. Whoa. Besides Keanu Reeves, it stars <laughs> Ian McShane, Lance Reddick, Adrian Pilecki, and William Defoe. It's the first John Wick. So, Tara, yeah. what is your log uh-huh. line for John Wick? So here's the fun part it, for everybody who knows. I've never seen John Wick. Up to None of the yes. John Wicks. Yes. First time Wicks. I saw John Wick. And I'd only seen like sort of parts when my husband was watching it before. So I didn't really know the thing. Okay, so here's my log line. <laughs> if, if, if you meet sad Keanu Reeves, kill his dog, and steal his cool-ass car, he's going to kill everybody. That's it. The end. <laughs> the end. Yep. Yeah. I just feel that's like pretty that's much that it. far off. Nope. I think that's pretty solid. I think that's exactly dead on the movie. <laughs> it's. I'm sitting there, and my first note is, never kill animal. Like, it doesn't matter <laughs> yeah. if you're a good guy, bad guy, what that animal is, never kill it. Because as incredibly simple of a setup it is, it keeps you engaged the whole time. Because every moment when I was like, oh, God, he's going to another set piece, I'm like, a set piece where those motherfuckers killed his dog. Get him, Keanu! It's like, you know, I was as, as I was watching this movie, I, you know, I understand why it's it spawned a whole franchise, because he actually, like the writer, they created IP from this movie. Yes, yes. Because, yes. they did. Because, and how simple it actually is, and then yes. we're going to talk about the movie in contrast to this but how simple and like the other thing i noticed is that like keanu reeves doesn't actually say anything except no. like one or two lines for like the first eight minutes of the movie he doesn't even have to say anything well, well because first eight minutes for the first hour and a half he doesn't say very much yeah Which but when like, lines how... are said in this movie you kind of wish they weren't said <laughs> oh, like every every line in this movie is one person flexing at another person, like, what, what, you think you're tough? What, you think you're oh. a badass? Or it's some, like, really contrite, quasi-philosophical conversation with, like, half the words left out. But I thought it really, <laughs> I don't know, I feel like this is actually, like, this is, is about as close to a uh, revenge uh, Perfection? It's, uh, like, almost a perfect script. Because you take a character that, like, we actually, all we know is his wife is dead. She left him a puppy. And that's all we need to know. Yeah, that's like, it. We, like, and the yes. best, and how they beautifully do the exposition uh, where the Russian guy says, like, this is who he was. I was like, this movie is so well written. It's insane. <laughs> I will give you conceptually, it's really well written. Dialogue oh, wise, it's garbage town. Oh, I totally <laughs> disagree, Adam. I think it's exactly what I wanted from the dialogue in this movie, which is going to be <laughs> that's, one line. That's a good way of putting it. The exactly the dialogue you want from this movie because okay, okay. I totally agree. Give me one I, one-liner from the movie. I don't remember any. Not a one, they Dave. You just watched it. Give me a single one-liner from the movie. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. 
Your... I'm Keanu and I'm mad. <laughs> wait, wait, okay. I, I, uh, hold on. I'm Keanu. You literally you watched it babe, an hour ago. You watched it one Not even an hour, hour ago. It ended 20, that's, 30 minutes that's ago. That's 30 point. minutes ago. You got William Defoe but, and but Keanu Reeves your, in this scene. Your membership the... has been revoked. That was one line from Ian McShane. That's true. That's true. That's a terrible... Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it was a good line. You asked for one line. You didn't say give me one good line, That's one true. great line. Excellent the first point, scene, Dave. the first scene I perked up Thank at you. is when Keanu Reeves, he buries his wife, he's leaving the funeral and William Defoe is there. And William Defoe, who I think is an amazing actor, walks up to Keanu Reeves and the exchange goes something like this. You're here. Well, I've known you a long time, but never like this. Yes, winter comes for us all, or something. And that was like the end of the scene. <laughs> and they shook hands and they went their separate ways. And I'm like, ah, get, ah a little more effort. All right, whatever. I, 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 it's funny. I guess maybe we watched too many bad movies because th- I just I really <laughs> yes. felt like it was like I really the like the dialogue and like sure it is what it is, but. The character's want, drive, and need is so clear oh, and no, it's so specific. T- Tari, and, like, we all get it. Like, and, it's just, like, boom. And don't take this as, like, I dislike this movie. It's not that. It's not that I dislike this movie. I actually think there's so many awesome parts to this movie that these missing building blocks really frustrate me because what it tells me is they're like, oh, yeah, we'll just we'll throw some dialogue in here later and we'll make the action do the action set up around this concept. And now they're on movie four and they've never improved upon that formula <laughs> and they're getting harder to watch, in my opinion. OK, OK, I'm going to say just before we started, I said my goal tonight is to make Adam laugh. I take that back. <laughs> I don't want to make you laugh now. I don't care if you laugh now. You uh, speak her- like crazy talk. It is heresy, I, Adam. I oh, feel like something, heresy, something thank happened you. to you during John Wick. <laughs> during John Wick. I, like, like you said, I just, I just, look, guys, here's the thing. And uh, everybody out there not listening to us, <laughs> I just watched John Wick, as Adam said, but I also drank like three scotches while watching John Wick because I love watching John Wick. It drives me to drink, I guess. I don't know what that is saying, <laughs> but I I enjoy it so much. What was the point of this? Can someone tell me when I started? I don't know, buddy. What my none point of us. Was? None of us know. You were mad at Adam. You were taking back <laughs> uh, yes. the CS the laugh card. Like, but but here's the thing. It's like I really enjoy this movie. I I do think it's the perfect revenge script. And here's a couple of things that I I I can't argue the dialogue with you, Adam. I just can't. There's no. Like, well, what about this? There just isn't. No. But I will say some of the intelligence of this script is it is if in screenwriting, there is a book called Save the Cat. And the basis of this book is that um, your main it, it, it's it's a book about how to write a screenplay. And one of its advice is in in the first 15 minutes, your character should save a cat. Meaning, do something that the audience can say, oh, this is a good guy, I'm going to root for him. Now, this movie is that in reverse. First of all, they kill a dog. And then, John Wick is not a character that is like, oh no, he's weak and he has to overcome anything. At the very, like, within the first... 15 minutes of this movie, they say, John Wick is the scariest motherfucker you've ever seen in your life. Baba Yaga. And you're dead. Yeah, Baba Yaga, the boogeyman. And I I really admire that they take that those screenwriting tropes, turn them on their heads, and turn them into an action movie. I And somehow Keanu Reeves pulls it off being like, Someone you know is a badass and still is kind of a sympathetic badass. And somebody that you could see. The other thing I think the important part is that you can see. um, It's not like he's past his prime or whatever, but it is like you could see why he doesn't want to do this. He's just done with it. Like he doesn't want to come back. He doesn't want to do it. But he, he, he busts into the cement in his house 
he's like, you know, put all his guns in. Like, of course there were, you know, I, I feel like, and I think we would all agree, there's, I mean, there's very few actors, if anybody besides Keanu, that could have made it as successful as it is. I mean, maybe I, Tom Cruise. Or I somebody completely, like that. I completely agree. I oh think yeah. The reason yeah, this Keanu, movie works yeah. so well is because of the star power in it from top to bottom. It's yeah. yep. fantastic. Even the minor characters, like oh, poor Lance Reddick, R.I.P. That sucks. I know. Yes. Um, but like you know, Ian McShane, William Dafoe. I mean, just so much talent in this movie. That's what made it for me. That's what made it for me. Him being invincible, you know, unstoppable. It is. Like, he he got thrown off of a second story. He and landed he did. flat on his back, and he got up. And this is my yeah. favorite part of the movie. So John Wick is trying to, long story short, guy kills John Wick's dog and steals his car. John Wick wants to kill him. So he go, follows this guy to this club where they set a trap for John Wick. And I swear to God, this setup happens three times where there's like, three different floors and there's like a patrol on each floor and the guys are like floor three clear and then as soon as they say it he kills them anyway long story short wick is like blowing through this whole club and then there's one guy who actually gives wick a run for his money he then proceeds to like pick up john wick and throw him off the mezzanine onto the floor of a dance club keep in mind john wick's killed 80 people so far yeah. in this club. Yeah. at which point the guy who threw John Wick leaves. Yeah. John Wick stands up and walks out of the club, and that's the <laughs> no, end of well, the scene. That's the end of no, the no, scene. No, no, no. The, the, there's one more little awesome item in that. Mm. When he, he's thrown, he lands on his back, as you said. He pulls a gun yeah. from from his ass crack, yep. like that where area, you keep one. right yep. where he landed, yep. Yep. and shoots up at the guy. And it, I don't think he hit him. No, he I didn't. think you're right. And he then kills they both him later leave. On. But he yeah. just leaves, and no one goes after him. I'm like, wait a minute, <laughs> guys. That's the thing. I, I I really feel like the issue that I have with these scripts is it's one action set piece to the next action set piece, and there's zero thought given to how you get from <laughs> one to the next. It's literally like oh, oh. John Wick's killed everyone in this building. He's gonna go home. He's gonna take a nap. Then he's yep. going to go to another building and shoot another bunch of people. And again, as like a one-off, this is a fun, who gives a crap movie? Yes, love it. Love it all day. Now we're on John Wick 4. There is a series <laughs> called The Continental that is coming out, I think on HBO Max, which yes, is yes. a prequel to how the hotel got made. And oh, the thing is, that's funny. Yeah. And the thing is, is that well, I love world building. Like, personally, there's nothing more fun for me than world building. But if you're going to spend all this awesome time and energy creating this, like, secret society with gold coins and you can't kill anyone when they're in the hotel, like, put a fraction of the effort into the dialogue. <laughs> Just look a little, little, little effort. And the transitions I between set pieces. I, I I think um Oh, I forgot what I think. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I was gonna pathetic. say, like, see, okay, so it's interesting. I feel like Adam and I have swap roles. Because most movies I'm yes! like, this is crazy. I don't know why, but in this, maybe there's something to so to me, I think what's great about John Wick is the simplicity about A to B yep. to C. Yep. Which is just yep. satisfying yep. to see. We know why this guy sucks. It's like, or why, like, the guy who stole his car sucks. Also, because he's a bad guy in Game of Thrones. <laughs> That's true. Casting. But then he got his penis That's cut right. off. That's right. That's right. Yes, yes. And, and oh, so he, he gets like, come up. It's a lot. Yep. Oh, yeah. He sure does. He's the eunuch. A a anyway. <laughs> um, and so, and I feel like, yes, are the, the fight scenes, like, insane, stupid, of course, like, this one guy. Is, but at the same time. The way they stage them and the way they do, I, there's a level where I'm like, okay, I buy this, oh. minus the falling on his back part, which I was it's like, 80, okay. It's, again, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, me too, me too. They're the top that stunt, one stood out. They're the, stunt, they're the top stunt team in the world. 8711, they're fantastic. Yeah. Like, you get amazing. no argument out of me. I will just say, and Tara, I hope you watch John Wick 2 and 3 and 4, because I think you'll get what I'm saying. Because when you have I, a character oh, yeah. like John Wick who has no weaknesses, 
You know, in fact, you kill the only weakness he has, which is the dog. Yeah. So John Wick's like, now you can't kill me. And then he just destroys everything. Like, you can't throw him (laughs) off of enough balconies or shoot him with enough bullets to slow the man down. Wait, 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 guys. I remember what I wanted to say, which is this. If you didn't like this film, Adam... I'm horrified to think what you think of the next one. <laughs> but please, Tara, go on. I don't even think... Honestly, the fact that we're doing these two together is an, is is really wild after seeing both of them. But, but I would say, like, Adam, you're right. I, I don't... I'd cert, I, as of right now, don't have any plans to see the rest of the John Wicks, but, like, because I think it would ruin how much I did really enjoy this first one because I could see where they could go with it. But I would argue as a character... The reason he's so unkillable is because he has nothing to lose. So, like, even if somebody does get the best of him and he kills him, John Wick still wins because he has nothing left to live for. Right, but that doesn't give us as much to root for because here's the thing, and this is what everyone will tell you. After the first movie, you don't care as much about John Wick's motivation because, like, John Wick 2 is about him getting his car back. And, like, that doesn't have the same weight (laughs) As seeing his dog die in front of him. You know what I mean? Like, no. and, and that's the problem. It's like, you're right. He has nothing to lose. So there's no stakes for him aside from killing as many people as he can before he dies. And I just, like, I sit there. I'm like, okay. I, I, I hesitate to open this door, but Uh-oh. you brought up John Wick 2 and 3 and 4. And I haven't seen four yet. But I will say this. When I saw John Wick 2, I was like, what happened? Because yep. they... It, it it is the uh, the whatever the hotel's name is the continental the continental it's the continental times a thousand in world building mm-hmm. and it's it, it the first time I saw two it was ridiculous to me it felt like wow. fan then, fiction it felt like John Wick fan fiction yeah and then and then I saw John Wick three and I started seeing what they're trying to do and I enjoyed it a lot more um, I don't. I, I can't argue you, Adam. I honestly can't bring up one counter argument that I <laughs> fully have faith in, except for this one. John Wick is awesome. <laughs> John Wick is awesome. He is. I am, guys, again, please don't misunderstand <laughs> the fact I do like this movie. I do like this movie. I don't necessarily like the fact that we're now going to be on like version eight or nine of this movie that just that <laughs> yeah. i don't like but the first movie i think it's gold it's like taken you know it's like they have my yes. daughter done great don't don't tell me anymore now should they have made a taken tv show and taken nope. five nope. nope but love the first no. taken love the first i mean i think like. the problem is ultimately is that the rest of these movies continue to make money so yep. whether or not we like them People Doesn't still matter. go to see it because they're yep. like, oh, it's a thing I know now that I want to see. And that even if you make four more bad ones, people are still going to go see them. Of course, like the un- Fast yeah. and Furious movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Oh, oh, I, I'm contemplating buying John Wick 4 now and just watching it. Maybe you should. <laughs> Maybe you should. If you were down here, Dave, I'd say Although, let's go to the movie theater. I, I, look, here, here's the thing, though. I, I will say this. When I started John Wick tonight, I was like, Oh, it's only an hour and 40 minutes. That's awesome. John Wick 3 or 4 is 3 hours yep. or 2 what? hours and 40 minutes. Yep. Oh, and, and 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 that just feels a little that that has been one of the things that has held me back from like rushing out and and running over 10-year-olds and old ladies to get a ticket for John Wick 4. Why like I remember when I was a teenager, and there was a couple. I forget what Back movie in it was. Nineteen not six. How dare you? Nineteen not seven. Nineteen of the tenth. When I wore my flappers dress. Da, 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 da. Um, but even I forget what movie it was. But it was like famous because it had like it was it was going to be three over three hours long, and it had an intermission. I, I'm just saying, oh, yeah, if we're going to make these movies, let's bring back the intermission. Give Agreed. me a 10-minute pee break. Please. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah, get uh, me a chance a to buy call. some popcorn or whatever. Yeah. I don't yes. know why we're not doing that. They're, yeah. like, the, these movies, every movie's just getting freaking longer and longer and longer. Yeah. 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 And then they add scenes in the credit sequence, so you exactly. know the ushers can't come in and clean the theater during then. Right. You're right. Bring back the intermission. intermission. Hashtag intermission. That's what this episode is all about. Bring back intermission. Bring back, <laughs> Bring intermission. back intermission. 
Uh, I love, Dave, that you set it up so nicely about how I feel about the second movie, because I'm really looking forward to talking about that one. Oh, oh, yes. Can we, well, can we talk right about after this? That? Yeah, can we talk about that one right after this? Yeah, let's do it. Yay. Oh, you don't mean John Wick 2, though. You mean the second movie we watched. The second movie we watched. That's yeah. a very <laughs> <Yeah>. important distinction. <laughs> that is. Welcome to Batshit, a frank and funny look at living with mental illness. Imagine being on Coke and Molly for a week straight, <laughs> complete with the crash right, yeah. that would come at the end of it. And that's pretty much what it's like. Yeah. While we'll touch on several illnesses, Batshit is focused on those along the spectrum of bipolar disorders. I think I'm a good dad. Yeah, yeah. And and he only has two kids left. He had eight at the start, yeah, but these last yeah. two kids. These, these, these two, though, are good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're doing good. <laughs> you know, I, I feel bad for the other six, but, yeah. you know. Yeah, they'll find their way home or they won't. Yeah. I'm your host, Adam. And I'm your other host, Brad. And we're both bipolar. Nah, I got a hangover. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I drank last night. And I'm right? fantasizing about what music to play at my funeral. Exactly. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Here's my funeral playlist. Exactly. So strap in and let's see how bad shit we really are. Is when you go manic, it's like someone opened up your head mm-hmm. and they dumped a bowl of minnows in. <laughs> and so I those like minnows that. are just <laughs> swimming around and like oh, no. bouncing off the walls and going into each other. And there's, there's 30 of them. Yeah. And those are your thoughts. Spoiler alert, pretty damn batshit. Listen and subscribe to Batshit, available wherever you get your podcasts. Now here's a movie that people also watched. When stunt people need to make a reel and don't have a movie, what do they do? They make a movie! Now that sentence is completely made up. I have no idea of the history of this movie except that Adam sent us the trailer and we couldn't pass it up. Available <laughs> on YouTube and made in 1994, it's Parole Violators. Tara, you said how much you really enjoyed this movie prior to us <laughs> recording this episode. Why don't you give us a fun, spontaneous log line? First of all, I did not say that at all. And I was just nominated to do this log line. And I have to say, this is a... This is a challenging task. So uh, I'm going to say, what happens when you take the saddest version of Christian Bale, (laughs) put him in a subpar middle school height, like play production, but you're really good at jujitsu, and then you try to piece together some semblance of then this happens and and you start off with the idea that one guy likes to film bad guys on parole hoping to catch them (laughs) to go back to jail (laughs) well done madam well done i'm gonna start this i'm gonna start you outshone me i'm gonna start this review (laughs) saying right now john wick would not exist Without parole violators. How dare you? Absolutely agree. How dare you? Absolutely agree. Parole Violators is a movie made by stunt people to feature their uh, stunt prowess. And that's exactly what 8711 does, right? Now, they do it 10 times better, and they have all these contacts, which gives them far more credibility. But that's, you know, parole violators. I I would also argue that... Um, John Wick probably had better cinematographers, a yep. better director <laughs> oh, than yeah. parole violators. Yeah. Would I, you there, argue there that, was... Dave? Is that the hill you would die on? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, man. Yes, it is. Oh, this movie. So, uh, so in this mov- movie, I'm using air quotes, you can't see. In this movie, there is no, a guy. No, we can see them. There is a guy who used to be a cop who... <laughs> Now follows around <laughs> oh, parolees, God. Oh, God. hoping to catch them doing something illegal, like Tara said. I'm sorry, but with the with a giant 1980s, night early 90s camcorder, right. yeah. like a yeah. huge one, yeah. filming it. He always catches them doing something bad. <laughs> he beats the crap out of them, ties them up, leaves them for the police to come. The police show up and they go, "Oh Wait. man." The, you know, the vigilante did it again. At which point, that man goes to his television yeah. station <laughs> and puts That's all right. of this on the air. He puts all of it on the air. How do the, how do the police not catch him? How do the police not? Well, it's got to be Jerry. Jerry's the I one. Mean- 
And the best part is he has a whole crew. And I was like, wait a second. Yes. They just said he was yes. like a vigilante. And he's like, hello, look at my video. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I had so much to talk about, and that opening just blew all of it out of the water. <laughs> I, I oh, I one thing I do remember is that when this movie started, and all the characters were doing all their things that characters do. Sure, I was like, is this a sequel to something I didn't see? Like, is this Parole Violators 2? And there was a Parole Violators 1 where he captured, he was a cop. And he dated another cop, and he captured a nice. villain, See, Dave, and got Dave. kicked off the force. One of the this secrets is good to good screen, Dave. exactly. You start in the middle, Dave. That's start good storytelling. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say, you guys. I actually want to say, for the first thirty minutes of this movie, I was like, "This might be the most spectacular movie we've watched." I like, agree. I yes. completely agree. One hundred percent. It was so perfect. Like every part of it was that. But like yes, it was very clear that these were stunt people that like were trying to make a movie to showcase their acting and their stunts, and the acting is just it's unwatchable. It's so good. It's, it's so beautiful because they don't think so. Like they believe it's like amazing. But then like the, a couple of the lines I had to write down because it was so beautiful. Because well, the, the, oh the woman in it, the girl, the woman in it, too. she yeah, is ahead. also a stunt woman, and she has a line. She's she's a cop, by the way, and we only know that because one scene she only wears, she wears a shirt that's a cop shirt, and that's it. That's she's not even doing cop stuff. Do. She's like monitoring the garage where they fix the cop cars. Yeah, and she doesn't even have a gun. Like, there's a whole thing. Yeah. Anyways, they, she has a line that like, I guess. We were establishing that they had a relationship in the past. And right. she goes, the food was cold, but everything else was hot. And I think she said it exactly <laughs> like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. The chemistry between those two was just liquid fire. Just <laughs> well, liquid well, the, fire. Here's the thing. In the very first scene between the two of them, oh. it takes place in a mechanic shop. Yes. Right. Like an auto mechanics. And there is more... Like buzzing and (laughs) grinding and hydraulics than any other mechanic shop you've ever been into. It's constant. And the whole scene, they're yelling at each other. Oh, that was the best thing in the world. They're just yelling for like three minutes. (laughs) You have no idea that they're in a relationship either. No. So you just see this guy who's a vigilant yelling at a cop for three minutes and then it dawns on you through the dialogue oh they're dating yeah yeah Yeah, well you also know that because he then invites her over for dinner where he does like (laughs) something straight out of like a sitcom from the 80s where he doesn't know how to make spaghetti (laughs) (laughs) and another one of his lines there is he's like I don't know what I'm making but I'm cooking something and it's just like a (laughs) covered in spaghetti I'm like you're clearly cooking pasta you dumbass like (laughs) it's very clearly pasta The, the left turns this movie too. Oh my god. That, this... so, so here's the thing. Here's the thing. Oh, that's all what we just described to you for the plot, that's all you need. Honestly, that's all you, that's need. All you, need. That's, you need. That's all you get. X cop. No, wait a minute. You need X cop running down parole violators making a TV show. Like that's honestly all you needed. But then like they introduced the main villain yes. who's one of these guys who like wears sunglasses all the time and he gets yeah. picked up from prison by his buddy Real charmer. And he goes, hey, man, let's oh, get a yeah. beer. Which, by the oh, way, is repeated God. so many times in this movie. In, like, really high-octane situations where they should be concerned about their physical safety. They're just like, let's go get a beer. Anyway, he's like, let's go get a beer. At which point, the guy who just got a prison goes, nah. At which point, the guy responds with, what? Now you like guys or something? Yep. And I was like, Jeez. like, okay, so then Adam goes, Oh boy, here we go. So did I. His, his response was Oh no, god. I like girls. Really little girls. And I was like, oh my god. So upsetting. And, <laughs> and, and, and as the story plays out, you realize he wasn't joking. No. Like, it was, like, it was also, an overstatement. He's, like, he says like he developed this penchant in prison. I'm like, wait. 
What? What? Like, but that's what he was arrested for. Also, child molesters get destroyed in prison. Like, you can't yes. be a child molester in prison. You will yeah. get destroyed. Oh, but there's all of these other instances where that actor says these lines. Like, for instance, at some point, him and his boys are getting their asses kicked, so he needs to go get reinforcements. So he goes and runs up to, like, this basically, like, Aryan Brotherhood type of group that was also in prison <laughs> yes, with him at the time. that's right. And he's like, hey, man, I need your help. At which point, Ugh. the guy who's, like, the head of the Aryan Brotherhood comes over They're and like is like. Like skinheads. Yeah, yeah, skinheads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were just like, uh, what does he say? He says something to the effect of, uh, hey, man, uh, I, I'm, I don't hang out with child molesters. And, you know, that's, you know, too weird of a kink. At which point, the bad guy puts his hand on the skinhead's hand and was yep. like, <laughs> you didn't seem to mind my kinks in prison. And I'm like, ah! what? <laughs> you just opened a whole nother storyline that going? who knew that was going to happen. Follow that storyline. Follow that one. I don't want to see anything else. I want to see that relationship, the ups and the downs. I want to see that. that. And oh. then the skinhead guy, he doesn't even say no. He was just like, hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was like, "Okay, what? let me, let me, I'll join you." And oh then they're God. like, "He's just like, like, he's like, do you want to? Like, the guy who like got you arrested? Should we like beat the shit out of him?" And he's like, "Yeah." And it's like, what? <laughs> like, that's all it took. Like, so, uh, I, I'm sorry. I just have so many. I, I just want. I, I just want to point out though the giddiness of Adam right now over this. I would argue the exact same script <laughs> as John Wick. I mean, my uh, strength in dialogue. And, <laughs> and he was hating on John Wick, no. but on this one, he's like, you know what? These guys. No, you, you know, know what? I'll give these guys this credit This is joyful. For. They took wild swings. You know what I mean? <laughs> they, like, took they took wild They wild did take wild swings. There was no I'm- measured, like, Easy. Nope, nope. There's no softball pitches here, baby. Everyone's coming Dude, hot fast over the plate. Take okay. a swing. The scene. So they, there, there's a scene in a park, right? So after we learned that they used oh, a child. God. Oh, my God. Away. No. Uh, so, like, so for whatever reason, our former cop guy is at the park playing, like, horseshoes or something with his buddy. Yeah, a run, random guy. And, like, he's in a full, like, <laughs> 80s, like, windbreaker tracksuit, which I thought was a great touch. That was sweet. And, like, by the way, they're at a, the park is filled with children, but, like, not another adult to be seen. No, nope, okay? no, none. I was like, <laughs> yes, you're why? right. I was like, why are there hordes of children at this park with no adult supervision? Okay, right? So then you see, like, our, the cop, like, perks up. And why does he perk up? Because, like, there's a car driving slowly, like, across the way. I'm like, what is that? And so then... One of the bad guys oh. is like slow, like he's a cholo, and he's like not at all like slyly following this little girl. He's just like hovering behind her, and he picks her up and pulls her to the car. And so the whole time he's in this windbreaking windbreaker outfit, and he's just watching. And I'm like, get closer, you! Everybody can tell <laughs> what he's gonna do. And so they grab her and they get her in this car, which is an upsetting scene. And so then the cop he starts running after them, but doesn't say anything. He doesn't like stop or like, hey, anybody else? He just runs like an insane <laughs> yes. person. I'm like, say something. Bring it to somebody's attention. A child just got kidnapped. Right. And then they're driving away in the car, and the guy has a motorbike. So he's on the motorbike, and he's chasing down the car, at which point the two guys with the little girl are like, oh, man, get rid of oh. her. At which point they open the back of the door and just go, Whoop, and they throw the little girl out of the moving car. And he, at which point, like, the door shuts, they turn to each other and they go, let's get a beer. Yep. <laughs> and I have to say, we got away with staged, this one. The way they staged the, the, like, the girl falling out of the car was spectacular. It was fantastic. It was absolutely it was, fantastic. Like, they, like, you could, like, it was obviously at a stop, but they, I actually thought, like, you know what? Good on them, because that's a, that was like they tried, but it was just so bad. And then the little girl's just sitting there in the bush, like, "Oh, it hurts. I want my mom." And then all of a sudden, there's like ten adults. I'm like, "Where yeah, the hell were you people?" Showed up. Uh, <laughs> it was the '80s. They were doing coke. Um, there's so it was many 94. things. In this. I, it's just, it's going back I would say to sorry, go ahead. Here's talk. where it lost me because it really, it really did. I for a while. I was wait, like, wait, 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 wait. Here's where it lost me. Yes. that is a spectacular statement. It should have been as soon as the <laughs> opening credits were over. I was like, I'm lost. <laughs> no, I wanted because it really set up like a really spectacularly bad movie. But as soon as we get into this like child molester thing, the yes. whole idea of we never ever do anything related to 
parole violators again. There's no, no more camcorder. It. We don't go back right. to a show. He just becomes like a vigilante. And I was like, and then it just becomes like, and then this happens. And then, so as far as like you're saying, then it's like cool stunt fight, cool stunt fight, stunt fight, stunts. That's it. The rest of the movie. Yep. But but the uh, yeah. the other thing too, and this is a, a testament to the time, like for these stuntmen, it was crucial for them to be able to show off the different types of stunts they could do. It wasn't just about like, you have guys who specialize in fighting. You have guys who specialize in falls. So, like, this lead did everything he could to incorporate every stunt he's capable of. Oh, so, God. like, there's a moment. So, again, they throw the girl out the car. All of a sudden, the guy's still riding the bike. Oh, they decide not to go get a beer. They're following him in the car. <laughs> he's on right. a dirt bike. He basically comes to, like, the edge of the road, and he has nowhere to go. And he then proceeds to do the lamest fall off a cliff down oh. the side of a mountain that you've ever seen in your life. It is straight up oh. like, uh, 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 and then he, <laughs> it, was, it was the that kind was of fall too. that yep. showed they had no insurance on set. Yep. <laughs> and then the, the, the right. next scene, he's like on top of a car that's driving forward <laughs> and backwards and forwards and backwards, <laughs> like and forwards and backwards, like trying to shake him off. Although they have, and it, they just eventually, he says, forget this. He kicks in the back windshield, and then they have a fight in the back seat that you can't see because yep. it's not lit. <laughs> oh, my God. I literally was looking at Art because he's watching it. I was like, I all I see is, like, the flash of something. I'm like, you did this whole, like, <laughs> elaborate stunt scene that no one will ever see. No one will ever see it. <laughs> it's so sad. It's so um, sad. The other, what was the other? Oh, he gets hit by a car, like, no less than five times. Oh, yeah. Where I'm just like, and he oh, walks yeah. away from it every single time. <laughs> and then he hits a car five times. Like, he fell on two or three cars, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. And I don't know, if you guys paid attention, I'm sure you did just like I did. Let's just say there were some <laughs> hair, makeup, and wardrobe continuity issues. Oh, yeah. Because oh. he wears this yellow shirt. And these jeans where he gets like beat up and he's like blood all over him. And then in the next scene, it's clean again. And Absolutely then in clean. the yep. next scene, there's yeah. no blood on his face. But then the next one after that, he'll be like uh, destroyed. It's so yeah. good. Can, can we talk about how he got destroyed, by the way? So basically, <laughs> child molester gets out of prison. He stops the first kidnapping. And then the child molester kidnaps the female cop's daughter, right? Well, she's the worst mother in the world, by the way. Um, you know, at which point he comes over, he's like, look, we need to go through the cops, or we could do this our way. And she's like, I'm a cop, but I guess we're going to have to do it our way. <laughs> at which point, they go to the bar, which is where they go to this bar like six times in the movie, where the uh, bad guys hang out, mm-hmm. and they proceed to get their ass kicked. <laughs> like, there was, they literally walked yeah. in, and they were like, Where's the girl? And then punch, 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 <laughs> punch. Like the it, my favorite part about this is so the main bad guy is towed up with the main good guy, and they're having like a one-on-one fight. So four dudes are beating the shit out of this 110-pound blonde woman. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's right. Uh, and uh, the other thing that's amazing is at some point, <laughs> I know in my head I'm like. They stop naming characters and they just all start <laughs> calling characters by like what they like. This one, the guy who's the, the bouncer guy. goes, "Hey, my name is Bouncer," and I was yes, like, that's "What?" Right. Oh and the my doctor's God, like, "Hi, me. I'm the doctor." <laughs> You know what the best part for that is? Is they're like, guys, I don't know how we're going to make this scene work. We better create some characters and get them in there to really move the plot along. But, there was but how will they know who we are in the credits? Right. I know. Say what we do. Right. Okay. Oh. I'm the bouncer. Oh. You're I the doctor. If this was a way, like back in the day, to get people into SAG. Yes. Oh, Ooh, I, I didn't think was. about that until just well, now. I wonder, you know, is this like a union guys. movie? Uh, I don't know. I assume maybe not. I looked up the main guy after this because I was like, because what it did is, is like, I, 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 what I did is I put this in the time and place, right? Which is, first, the other thought that I have, which I'll ask you guys, do you think they shot this on film? Because I don't think digital was really that big in 94. And I'm like, they no, spent a they lot of money. No, I think they shot this on video. Yeah, I think they shot this on video. Okay, thank God. Because yeah, I, I was think, like, yeah. this is so DV. expensive. Yeah, but, no, no, like, no. the thing that broke my heart is I think everybody who was in this and all the people they were telling were probably, like, so excited that they were making a movie. Oh, exactly. And then you see it, and you're like, oh, no. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I, I just have, I just, there's so many. So, the girl gets kidnapped by the child rapist. Correct. That who has kidnapped this girl. Oh. The amount of time spent by the boyfriend or the, the vigilante and the mother flirting and kind of like figuring out yes. what to do while the rapist has her daughter is staggering. It's absolutely staggering. It's really upsetting. Yeah, it really is. Like, yeah, yeah. Try. And then, again, they finally come up with a plan. They go to execute the plan. They fail immediately, and they're kidnapped by people. Yes. And so the guy, he's like, they're in a pickup truck. He jumps up out of the pickup truck, grabs oh, the, the li- limb of a branch <laughs> as the truck keeps going <laughs> with oh, the that's girl right, yes. in the back. And he that's just runs away. Like, he just yep. runs away. <laughs> <laughs> Leaves her to her fate. <laughs> That was spectacular. Uh, when he pops out of that and he lands on that limb above, I was like, oh, that is yeah. spectacular. Oh, great. Oh, that God. Is no one can run like him. No. Uh, my favorite, though, is, okay, so at some point, they all get out, right? And they, the little girl is in the hospital because she's in a coma for some reason. Oh, right, 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 right. right. And so- wait, oh, <laughs> wait, hold on. Before we get there, cause can we talk about her being tied to a pool floaty? Oh god! Like, oh, that's like, right. Like, yes. That that oh, whole scene didn't make any sense. I'm like, why is she on? She's sitting on a milk crate on a pool floaty, and the guy fashions this like pool, like the pencil I, on the end yeah, of it like to that, poke yeah. the yeah. pool floaty. What? And he goes, "You're gonna fight that guy." Well, I <laughs> poke the brass. <laughs> yes. I'm like, that's not an ultimatum. That's just what you're telling him to do. <laughs> and then the every then he thirty even seconds, says, like, I'll poke it more. Yeah. Like that, just that whole exchange was like, they didn't know what to do here. They right. wanted to get to the thing. They're like, what? It doesn't make any sense. Just keep it, shooting. Someone in the valley had a pool for them to shoot yes. at, and they took advantage of that. Now, what that guy did not do was clean his pool. Everyone oh. who jumped in that pool got <laughs> tremendously sick. Like, <laughs> horribly, horribly sick. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry. All right, Tara, go on. Now, please, let's go on to the, the hospital okay. scene. So they get the girl. Like, they get out of there. They go to the doctor and the hospital. And this doc, the guy who plays the doctor is just amazing. Oh, yeah. He's really and, good. But the best part is, the best part is, it's like, she's like, the mom is like, I'm a, such a bad mom. I damned my daughter. Like, which I was like, what is she talking about? I guess she said, like, damn you, keep breathe or something. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever. The point of it, the best part is, is like, so she's like, I can't, like... The, the cop's like, let's go for a drive. There's nothing you could do here. And she's like, I can't leave my daughter. I can't leave. Then she, the little girl flatlines. They run in. The, the hospital, you know, the doctors and nurses save her. They bring her back to life. And, and the mom turns to the guy and goes, let's go for that drive now. And I'm like, she almost <laughs> just died. Perfect. I know she's not going to die again. Like, what are you doing? Oh, man. And then, of course, there was. Yeah, go ahead, Dave. There were some spectacular lines in this movie. I <laughs> it, like all I did was write down like three pages of quotes. <laughs> um, first of all, I, I at some point someone said "A Kiss Before Death," and I was like, "How is that not the title of this movie?" <laughs> <laughs> true, it's true. <laughs> Another one is um, what? This is a good. No, no, no. We're. Never associate me with a bird. Birds are weak. Oh, That's right. <laughs> that was what? one of my favorite scenes in the movie. So they have the gun on this girl. She's in the back of the pickup truck. She starts seducing the guy <laughs> That's right. with the yeah. shotgun. Oh, God. Oh, like the, oh, most, yes. the most like I've seen a porno before seduction technique where she's literally like thrusting her hips at the guy and he's like, I'm into this. At which it point, so it would be like if you took the most alpha male yep. and said, okay, how would a woman seduce a person? Right, 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 right. right, right. Would he would be that. like, this is how. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then, so he, they, she, she distracts him by saying, oh, I'm going to go to the bathroom. And then she goes to the bathroom. She takes off her pants. I don't remember why she took her pants off. Took distractions, off her pants. Adam. Distractions. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. To it, shake the bush. To take the bush. That's what it was. Anyway. Then the vigilante comes, saves them, and they say, all right, we got to go get the girl. She still doesn't have pants on. Don't know why she didn't put her pants back on. (laughs) But she goes, well, that guy has pants. And they take his pants off, one of the guys that killed him. Now, if this was any other movie, 
And this was a plot point. What would have happened is they would have taken that guy's green pants off. They would have cut to her running away. And then the next time you saw her, they would have a female version that are flattering of those pants on that woman. But yet, yes. they have that man pants <laughs> on that woman for the rest of the movie. It's <laughs> like the most... Uh, it it was a ballsy choice, but I liked it. <laughs> I, I noticed it too. Oh, man. There, this movie was oh, like filled oh. with moments. Yep. That's what I'll say. There, there was the, the, the bad woman... Who oh, I think was... was part of the white uh, uh, white supremacy group. Yep, and she was like, "I'm in my own movie, yep. and I'm the Terminator. <laughs> yeah, she wants yep. to be Terminator, and yep. I'm going to just I, I'm the main villain, and I'm going to kill these people." She has three scenes. Is probably dispatched in the third scene very quickly. Yeah, she 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 impaled herself on a nail. <laughs> That's right. That's, That's how right. she died. Right. She impaled herself <laughs> on a nail. I don't even know how she did it, but she yeah. She was, and then yeah. and then the cop lady said, "I hope you had your tetanus shot, bitch." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know why lines stuck with like someone who can't remember names. Full line stuck with me. <laughs> there was. It, this is all during like the final action sequence, where oh. first of all the female cop, that stunt woman had never shot a gun in her life because no. she looked <laughs> yes. terrified yes. every time she pulled the trigger, and she didn't know how to hold it, and she's like running around shooting, and again these guys are trying to show off their skill sets. So there's a guy who like rappels down from the ceiling, inverted yep. shooting. Yep. <laughs> yes, no reason that's for right. that. You know, nope. what I mean? like, yes, immediately dies. <laughs> the- the least amount of cover and the least likely to hit your shot yeah. is how he was like, I'm going to do this. Yep. Oh, man. There was, I forgot there was a scene well before that where I think it was right after he gets on the tree branch, he jumps up and then he starts running and he runs up this like dirt hill and like these four or five guys follow him and they all start slipping down the hill. Including, yes. <laughs> and yep. I like, and yeah, I was, there were so many him. unnecessary like track, like, like connective shots in this movie, like watching this guy drive out of the driveway. And it was just like, yes. this movie could have been 30 minutes shorter, but right. just cutting that. It was so crazy. Uh, I, 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 re- I just think at the end of the day, every single bad guy in Los Angeles went to war for this child molester. And it just <laughs> yes. didn't ring true. It's like, what the hell, man? Like, if it was, make him any other type of bad guy. Make him an arsonist. Make him a drug dealer. Yes. Make him, yes. I don't know, a forger. Didn't matter. But, like, <laughs> fucking, For- Wait, like, is it illegal to forge? Y- yes. 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 Dave. Dave. Oh. Dave. That's why you had to it. leave California, remember? <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah right. that's true. Bad chance. I, my, my last note in this is he says to her, it's over. And it's like, thank God, it's over. (laughs) That's what I said. I said, it's over is what I've been waiting 90 minutes for. (laughs) The number of times these guys die and they look dead, but like not in a I'm playing possum dead kind of way. Like there was a moment the guy drove a car. It flipped six times. He lands. One of the bad guys runs down and looks at him, and he's lying there with his eyes open. Oh, that's right. Wide open. His eyes are open. He's like, oh, he's dead. Yeah. He leaves. Five minutes later, it's that moment where he's like, (gasps) and I'm like, wait a minute, you were passed out with your eyes open? Like, that's how you went to unconsciousness? Like, I don't... Mm. Mm. Oh, parole violators. Oh, parole violators. We need to rate rate this movie. Oh. We do. I, I have to plug in my computer I'm as tired after this review as I was after watching this. Because <laughs> you were on the edge of your seat the whole time. Oh, man. Oh, my God. I was I, I, You know, I got to say, I don't regret watching it. Now, uh, okay, so we... Uh, now we have to answer the question, is this a movie that people would also watch or should watch? We have a three-tiered rating structure. Uh, top is people must also watch. This is, you got to see it. In the middle, people could wa- also watch, you know, if you want to. And third, people don't also watch. For the love of God, avoid this movie. Um, 
I, Adam, I'll... what do you think? Go, oh, no, no, no. Tara, Tara, go ahead. You know, like I said, there was something about the first 30 minutes or so of this movie that were pretty spectacular. Like, that you, that, to make such a terrible movie so perfectly, and like the screaming scene. <laughs> I want to I want to do a caveat. People could also watch the first 30 minutes of this movie and enjoy it. After that, they should not watch the rest of this movie. <laughs> that's my that's my review. There you go. That's what I, I I'm going to give it people could also watch. I feel like this is a great movie. You ever been to one of those bars that has like a really bad movie playing on the TV yeah. and no one's really watching? And every once in a while you look up and you're like, what's going on there? I feel like that's this movie. It's on in the background at a party or at a bar. And you guys, 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 wait, 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 wait. This is where she screams, you're dying because I cussed you. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that. there's those moments. So I, I'm going to give this could also watch. Yes, could also watch. Uh, Tara, I'm so glad that you said like the first half hour you were into it and then the and then you kind of fell off because I feel the exact same way and it's just good to know there's others like me out there. How dare you? How dare you? I wait, what? I I thought that was a compliment. <laughs> now I'm hurt. How dare you, Tara? How dare you? But I'm going to say people could also watch. It, it, it really is. It, to me, what you were saying about the bar, Adam, is absolutely true. To me, that's saying this would be the perfect MST3K movie. Yep. You know, something that you just watch and shout along with. And yep. it is so amazing in that those terms. There's this room, there's this movie called The Room, which yes. has been kind of... Uh, uh, fluffed up to be like the world's most worst movie. Mm-mm, the Room. Move over, make room <laughs> for what was this called? Parole, Parole violators. violators. <laughs> because yeah, it is so much argument. better. Bad. That's a pretty. Solid... I think that's a strong argument. I actually do too. I think this is a much. Yeah. This is much worse. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so what else are you guys watching? I'm super curious to see where you're at right now oh. because I want to give some really good suggestions because I feel like if people go and watch Parole Violators and then don't have a follow-up, <laughs> they may never listen to us again. So what do you got? Why don't you – you can? do you mind going first, Adam? I, oh, I, I yeah, need to. I would love to. Here's, here's my recommendation. If you have not seen Black Dynamite, go oh. out and oh, watch yes. Black Dynamite. That movie, Michael Jai White, is – a 70s black exploitation film made in 2000 and like uh, 12 something like that and they know yeah. exactly what they're doing and they know exactly how to make a bad movie so perfect like there is a character who reads all of his stage directions like that <laughs> like he goes the black militant turns startled and then <laughs> Who plays Black Dynamite, Michael Jai White? Like, he stays in the moment, but the actor behind the actor, you see him be like, fuck, all right? (laughs) It is Black Dynamite. Go out, watch it. You will not regret it because there's a Western coming out that's like Black Dynamite doing a Western that I'm just really excited for. So that's my suggestion. Black Dynamite. Wait, wait. What's this What's this Black Dynamite doing a Western movie? Oh, it's a new... I saw the trailer like a half a week ago. Um, it's it's literally a western, but Black Dynamite's doing it like a black exploitation film. It it looks fantastic. okay. It looks fantastic. okay. I see what you're saying. Yep. Oh, I gotta look that up. Yeah. All right. What do you guys got? I mean, I'll just okay. This is it's gonna be a plug for myself, uh, mostly because <laughs> I, it's, it's, it's it's what I've been watching. Have you guys heard of a little show called Jury Duty? I know. Yes. Adam has. Yes. So. I, I'm just going to, okay, so I was in episode six. I played James Marsden's agent. I was in another episode that you'll never see because that didn't make the cut. But what's crazy is, is that, you know, I've worked on a lot of television shows and movies and but that were like, who cares, right? Minus Key and Peele, which people are like, that's cool. People are coming out of the woodwork to like talk to me about jury duty. This guy, Ronald yes. Ladin, our guy who was our, our, our hero, just got signed by Artist First. Like, of he's he in did. a commercial with Ryan Reynolds. I'm like, yeah. 
when we were making the show in Huntington Be Huntington Park, <laughs> and I had to drive an hour and twenty minutes each way every day to the middle next to the Farmer John plant. I did not think that the show was going to be a hit. <laughs> hey, and my editors who worked on this show did not think it was going to be a hit either. <laughs> no. Hey, and in my anger and bitterness of not living in Los Angeles anymore, didn't think the show was going to be a hit either. Wait. <laughs> Although I, I will say this, so we also have a friend in the in the show, yes. and his name is Brandon. He's the guy who falls and hurts himself. He's uh, Tim. What's his name in the, in the show? His, his name is his character name is Tim. He's in the Tim. Jury. Thank you. So Brandon had his fiftieth birthday party, like, yes. I don't know, two three weeks ago. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'll go see him. Every single member oh, yeah. of the cast was there. Yeah. Every they all, single. They all hang out. I get. They yes. All they all hang, hang out. out. Yeah. Uh, the the guy Damn. is his name Ronald Roland. Ron. Ron. Ron Song. Ron. He came. No. 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 The the guy who was the lead. Oh, Ron Gladden. So there's yeah. two. The guy, the guy who played Ken, the uh, Asian, the Korean guy. Yep. His name is Ron Song, and I, right. he was so. I, I will say the one thing I know is there's so much funny stuff that people were doing. That there's just not any way that you, you could. We, there's enough time to show all the stuff they're doing. But yeah, Ronald well, Gladden. Uh, people, ask, I've had a couple people ask me like, he's got to be an actor. I'm like, dude, that guy is is the most that guy that you will ever like. <laughs> yep. He's the nicest. He's just a sweet, nice guy. It's a sweet, Wait, nice I, stoner. Yeah. <laughs> is is Ronald like the mark? Because yeah. the idea, and I, I watched the first five minutes of the first episode, so I apologize for being a little bit of a, a dick here. Well, now you can watch um, it. But well, I desperately I want to watch it, especially now that I know you're in episode six. I have to watch it. Well, you only and hear I have me. to know I'm everything just a voice. that happens. I'm just a voice. That's like how you are all the time with me anyway. That's fine. Fine. So, <laughs> um, but the idea of the show is everyone's cast in this jury, but one person, and that one person thinks this is a real trial, and he's part of a real jury. Correct. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. I had no idea. Because you talked about it, but I just assumed it was a like a fictional sitcom, like right. a, like The Office. Well, when we were doing it, I couldn't really tell you guys. Any, like, this was like a big NDA show. I'm mm. like, I can't tell you. Couldn't tell you yes, James yeah. Carson. Like, in like how we were doing it and what we are And I think people, do, even when you watch the show, I don't think people appreciated how insanely impossible it was for us to pull this off. Because it wasn't just this guy was at the jury every day. He had to believe that this was a real working courthouse. So we had to come up with this yes. whole story oh. about why this courthouse was closing down. When they sequestered him, I had to find a hotel, which was the worst place in the world. And they I, we, they had to, like, actors had to stay there. They had to believably stay there. And at night, they would sneak back out when they wanted. And they could, like, so he didn't know. I, I will say, Tar, <laughs> I, you, you did not say any details about the show. No, but no I would you occasionally didn't. get a text randomly that was like, James Marsden is so attractive. And I'm like, <laughs> where did that come yes! from? So I was like, why? Okay, I mean, he's a good looking yes. guy. And that was the response. I'm like, I don't know what that has to do with anything. but I'm just um, saying, because there's cameras well, everywhere. I, uh, so all over the courthouse, there's cameras. And there was one particular place that he would, like, before he was going to like go do something, he'd do some push ups. And I'm just saying, it was a great camera to have. <laughs> I I do I do want to clarify that when when I said the thing about I assumed it was fiction that that was after filming was done and it was on the air, um, and during filming you were just saying you were on a show I I had no idea what show you were on except no. for jury duty and you kept saying oh no we know exactly what's going on yeah. No, it was no, I'm pretty just... absurd. Again, and I, I also didn't talk about it because I'm like, I don't think anybody's ever going to see the show. This show's insane. Came very close to not being. Yeah, seen. but very but it's very, very popular. Like, uh, oh, it's huge. No, huge. NPR's happy uh, uh, pop culture happy hour did a segment on it, and it just seems like it's really taking off. It's wild. It's so wild. Anyways, uh, that's what I'm watching because, uh, again, this is a personal plug and I'm in it. But also because it's hard to it, – I've obviously been watching things like Succession and stuff that every – Ted Lasso and all that. But I was like, it's hard to, like, pay attention because also – all people on the cast and crew, like we're all sort of in communication a little bit here and there about like, oh, yeah. and then this person's on this. And, and you're just all of a sudden it became very quickly. I was like, 
people like this is a this is a hit. And then it was number one yeah. on some TV chart for like a week or two. And I was like, what? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Anyways. All right, Dave. So what are you watching? Um, I. Uh... I, you know what? It's so funny because during the week I think of all these things I, I need to mention and I forget. And when you said Black Dynamite, I was like, okay, let me think of a uh, quote-unquote intentionally bad film to to call out. And I, I want to call out, and this is one I call out a lot, Lost Skeleton of Cadavera. It's a film from 2001 or two, and it is a... Um, it, it is intentionally filmed like a 50s bad teen sci-fi horror movie. Nice. And um, the dialogue is spectacular in its redundancy and its cleverness. And then just some uh, great, great performances. I think the one person you would recognize is Brian Howe. Um, I can't think of any movie he's been in right now, but he's been in a ton of uh he's usually a um what do they call that it not secondary character Char- color character 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 actor character actor that's the word i was gotcha. looking for yes cool sweet nice so that's what so i think people watching. could also watch yeah why don't you guys reach out to us on the instagram and on the twitter tell us what you're watching or what we should watch and we can give you our opinion which is what you value <laughs> clearly that's all they want, Adam. That's, That's all they want. Thanks for listening to People Also Watch. Um, like Adam said, reach out to us on the Twitter and the Insta. And uh, remember, if you can't watch a film that you can recommend, why watch it at all? What? What? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs>